Brittle stars are echinoderms in the class Ophiuroidea, closely related to starfish. They crawl across the sea floor using their flexible arms for locomotion. They may have the strongest tendency toward five-segment radial symmetry. The body outline is similar to that of starfish, in that Ophiuroids have five arms joined to a central body disc. However, in Ophiuroids, the central body disc is sharply marked off from the arms. Brittle stars live in areas from the low tide level downwards. Shallow species live among sponges, stones, or coral, or under the sand, with only their arms protruding. Deep water species tend to live in or on the sea floor or adhere to coral or urchins. The most widespread species is the brooding snake star, a grayish or bluish, strongly luminescent species. Serpent snake is an active brittle star, moving with a jerky swimming action of its legs and sometimes burrowing. It is a filter feeder, feeding on a wide range of food, but also a bottom-feeding carnivore and detritivore. It can regenerate its arms if they are damaged or torn off. Sexual reproduction takes place during the summer. The larvae are the typical Ophiopluteus larvae of brittle stars and later settle on the seabed and develop into juveniles. The mouth of these animals is rimmed with five jaws, and serves as an anus as well as a mouth. Behind the jaws is a short esophagus and a stomach cavity which occupies much of the dorsal half of the disc. Digestion occurs within ten pouches or in folds of the stomach, which are essentially cica, but unlike in sea stars, almost never extend into the arms. The stomach wall contains glandular hepatic cells. Ophiuroids are generally scavengers or detritivores. Small organic particles are moved into the mouth by the tube feet. Ophiuroids can readily regenerate lost arms or arm segments unless all arms are lost. Ophiuroids use this ability to escape predators, in a way similar to lizards which deliberately shed the distal part of their tails to confuse pursuers. Moreover, the amphiurity can regenerate gut and gonad fragments lost along with the arms. Discarded arms have not been shown to have the ability to regenerate. Basket star has an endoskeleton of calcified ossicles and is covered in a fleshy layer of skin giving it a rubbery appearance. It feeds by perching in an elevated position and extending its arms in a net-like fashion perpendicular to the current. The branches and branchlets twist and coil, making it resemble an animated bush. Trapped prey becomes the center of a knot where it is immobilized by the secretion of mucus. Further coiling of the branches brings the food to the mouth which is on the underside of the central disc. There is no anus and any undigested fragments are expelled through the mouth. It is cryptic and remains well hidden during the day. It is protected by the toxic nature of the sponges where it lurks, but is sometimes eaten by fish and crabs. Starfish are infrequently found as fossils, possibly because their hard skeletal components separate as the animal decays. Despite this, there are a few places where accumulations of complete skeletal structures occur, fossilized in place in Lagerstaden, so-called starfish beds. The starfish are a large and diverse class with over 1,900 living species. They are characterized by flattened, star-shaped body as adults consisting of a central disc and multiple radiating arms. The common starfish feeds on a variety of benthic organisms. When feeding on a mollusk such as a mussel, 
it attaches its tube feet to each shell valve and exerts force to separate them slightly. Even a gap of just one millimeter is sufficient for the starfish to insert a fold of its stomach, secrete enzymes, and start digesting the mollusk body. It has a well-developed sense of smell and can detect the odor of prey species such as the common mussel and crawl towards it. It is dioecious, which means that each individual is either male or female. In the spring, the females release their eggs into the sea. Octopus starfish has a unique morphology, displaying multiple arms with a clear distinction between disc and arms, rather than displaying pentaradial symmetry, a remarkable characteristic of echinoderms. Herein we report the first chromosome-level reference genome of this starfish and an essential tool to further investigate the basis of the divergent morphology. It feeds on sea urchins and similar to other predatory asteroids, it scares them off and according to some sources, even clams and fish. Mosaic Sea Star is a five-armed starfish that distinguished by its very bright colors. A group of raised yellow ridges covers its red upper surface and it is soft in texture. It is one of the few poisonous sea stars, and can cause numbness in humans if it is carried for any length of time. It lives in rocky reefs off the southern coast of Australia, at a depth of 10 to 180 meters it primarily feeds on sponges. Prehistoric starfish seem to have inhabited shallow tropical seas and would probably have preyed on various slow-moving marine invertebrates. They had enlarged ossicles forming a bumpy crown over their central disc, with five arms that could be either narrow and elongated and club-shaped. Since Storanderaster were both part of a larger grouping of starfish called Valvatids it's unclear whether these features mean that they were very closely related to each other or if it was simply due to convergent evolution. Necklace starfish can reach a diameter of about 30 cm tips of the arms and the disc center of this starfish are bright red, while the remaining parts are paler, forming large plates. The appearance of this sea star can be highly variable and its identification using picture can be difficult, as many other species can have a very similar aspect. It feeds on encrusting sponges, detritus or small invertebrates. Starfish are keystone species in their respective marine communities. Their relatively large sizes, diverse diets and ability to adapt to different environments makes them ecologically important. The feeding activity of the omnivorous starfish on sandy and seagrass bottoms appears to regulate the diversity, distribution and abundance of microorganisms. These starfish engulf piles of sediment removing the surface films and algae adhering to the particles. Organisms that dislike this disturbance are replaced by others better able to rapidly recolonize clean sediment. Many species of starfish are brightly colored in various shades of red or orange. They have tube feet operated by a hydraulic system and a mouth at the center of the oral or lower surface. They are opportunistic feeders and are mostly predators on benthic invertebrates. Several species have specialized feeding behaviors including aversion of their stomachs and suspension feeding. Leech's sea star typically has five arms, and its overall coloration can vary, often appearing in shades of red, orange or brown. It can have a textured appearance, and its arms may be slightly pointed. It tends to inhabit intertidal and subtidal zones, where it can feed on various small invertebrates. They release their gametes, which are then fertilized in the water, giving rise to free-swimming larvae that eventually settle and undergo metamorphosis into young sea stars.
The water vascular system of the starfish is a hydraulic system made up of a network of fluid-filled canals and is concerned with locomotion, adhesion, food manipulation and gas exchange. Water enters the system through the madreporite, a porous, often conspicuous, sieve-like ossicle on the aboral surface. It is linked through a stone canal, often lined with calcareous material, to a ring canal around the mouth opening. A set of radial canals leads off this, one radial canal runs along the ambulacral groove in each arm. An inhabitant of coral reefs and sea grass beds, blue star is relatively common and is typically found in sparse density throughout its range. They live subtidally, or sometimes intertidally, on fine or hard substrata and move relatively slowly. This sea star is fairly popular with marine aquarium hobbyists, where it requires a proper, slow acclimatization before entering the tank system, and an adequate food source similar to that found in its natural habitat. Generally thought of as a detritivore, many sources maintain that this species will indefinitely graze throughout the aquarium for organic films or sedentary, low-growing organisms such as sponges and algae. Antarctic starfish does not attack members of its own species but can attack sea star of other species. This seems to be due to chemoreceptors which can identify conspecifics by their odor. Sea star often converge on food sources and a study was undertaken to examine how they do this. It was found that food-deprived individual could distinguish between the odors emitted by satiated and by starved sea star of the same species. They were strongly attracted to the former and took little notice of the latter. It is much less sensitive to higher water temperatures than the other Antarctic marine species on which it feeds which mostly find temperatures above 3 degrees Celsius lethal. Even when not killed at higher temperatures, many organisms cease to feed, may remain immobile or fail to reproduce and others started metabolizing anaerobically. A study was undertaken to examine the implications of this for the Antarctic marine environment if water temperatures rise as a result of global warming. Granulated sea star is a large sea star with a convex body and five short arms. The arms have rounded tips, making it appear chubby. It prefers shallow waters ranging from 1 to 50 meters deep and above average temperatures of 24 to 29 degrees Celsius it is a carnivore that, like other sea stars, has its mouth on the underside of its body. Its arms can become deformed when small parasitic limpets attach to their underside. They are also threatened by habitat loss due to ocean acidification which can lead to coral bleaching. A mature cushion star is pentagonal to subglobos in shape with an inflated appearance and much abbreviated arms. It can grow to a diameter of 30 cm rows of tube feet are on the underside, and it has a central mouth. The color is very variable and includes a mottling with darker and lighter shades of fawn, brown, orange, yellow and green. The armored body wall is made of calcareous ossicles which are supported internally by pillars which buttress the ambulacra. The armoring contains pits into which the tube feet can be retracted. The body cavity is filled with water. On the dorsal face, they can be covered with small conical tubercles, as well inside as outside of popular areas. Starfish are deuterostomes, closely related together with all other echinoderms, to chordates, and are used in reproductive and developmental studies. Another area of research is the ability of starfish to regenerate lost body parts. The stem cells of adult humans are incapable of much differentiation and understanding the regrowth, repair, and cloning processes in starfish may have implications for human medicine. Starfish also have an unusual ability to expel foreign objects from their bodies, which makes them difficult to tag for research tracking purposes. Like other sea stars, the cushion sea star is a slow-moving animal using its tube feet to move about, 
collecting or subduing the food items that constitute this omnivorous species diet, namely, algae, detritus, mussels and other invertebrates. It has eight short, distinct, triangular arms, though seven or nine armed individuals can be found. These arms are laterally fused together for some of their length, leaving ray-like tips of varying length to jut from the disc-like body. Nepanthia belsheri is a hermaphrodite and can reproduce both sexually and asexually. The gonads generally produce oocytes, but in some, no spermatogenic material is present, so they function as ovaries, while others produce sperm and function as testes. Reproducing sexually allows the species to disperse to new locations in a way it could not do if it relied entirely on asexual reproduction. The lifespan is at least four years. A furrow appears on the disc which gradually deepens, and the two sides of the starfish pull away from each other. The disc is torn into two portions and over time, new arms grow on each section. As a result, the new individuals are asymmetric and often have six or seven arms of varying lengths. The crown of thorn starfish is characterized by its numerous spiny arms that radiate from a central disc. The spines are long and sharp, and it has a tough, rigid exoskeleton. It is known for its voracious appetite for coral polyps. It preys on hard corals by extruding its stomach onto the coral surface and releasing digestive enzymes to absorb the nutrients. Periodically, the population of the crown of thorn starfish can undergo outbreaks, leading to devastating consequences for coral reef ecosystems. These outbreaks can result in the destruction of large areas of coral, affecting the overall health and biodiversity of the reef. When the population is not kept in balance, it can negatively impact the resilience of coral reefs, potentially leading to a decline in coral cover and a reduction in the diversity of marine life that depends on the reef ecosystem. Sand sifting starfish spends much of its time buried in the silta seabed. It feeds on detritus and bivalve and gastropod mollusks which it swallows whole. It also sometimes engulfs pebbles and digests the biofilm and small invertebrates adhering to the surface. It can be confused with archaster which looks similar because both have developed features to enable them to dig through sand through convergent evolution. Archaster has spines that are flat and blunt and on its upper surface has parallel, radial rows of plates while astropectin does not. Southern Sand Star has a variable number of long, slim, tapering arms but seven is the most common number. The central disc and the arms are a dull yellow color, irregularly blotched with dark green or black. It is a carnivore and is often found half buried in the sediment in seagrass beds where its coloring provides camouflage. It is likely to be an opportunist predator of macrofauna, and possibly also a scavenger.